They say that weight is the enemy of performance. They haven't driven a Raptor R. That thing will do a burnout on pavement, too. And if you think that thing is brash, you haven't heard a Cadillac Escalade V. This is the loudest car we've ever heard. They haven't heard anything since that porcupine stabbing in suburban Detroit. I don't care what they say. There is no way that thing is legal. Shut it off. God. <clears throat> Sorry. If all of this Americana is too American for you, well, the Brits have an answer. Hello, sir. Good day. Is this on? I do believe so, sir. But I can't hear it, sir. It's the same thing with this thing. Hmm, British thing. Either way, each of these apartment buildings on wheels weighs 6,000 pounds, and yet they're all faster than the fastest heavyweights in the world. Or are they? You're gonna wanna watch this one. Ford F-150 Raptor R is the sort of automotive Swiss army knife that honestly shouldn't be legal, and probably isn't in places like, say, Switzerland, where the Swiss army knife comes from. But here, it's king of the road. 700 supercharged V8 horsepower, enough suspension travel to run over a supercar, and a 10-speed automatic that bangs off shifts like a gunslinger from the wild, wild west. <laughs> Well, gunshots are exactly what the Cadillac Escalade V's exhaust sounds like. Kids these days love their crackle tunes, but Cadillac has out-deafened all of them. This is one of the loudest production cars we've ever heard. And it's glorious. And the engine is a full liter bigger than the Raptors. 6.2 liters of supercharged pushrod V8 that makes 682 horsepower. With the same 10-speed automatic as the Ford and weighing just one American-sized passenger more, this is going to be one hell of a race. If you expect the Range Rover to have ye oldie timey five liter supercharged V8, you're stuck in the past. It has another ancient V8, BMW's 15 year old 4.4 liter, now making 523 horsepower. And if you're wondering why on earth a Range Rover has a BMW engine in it years or decades after Land Rover and BMW broke up, so am I. I have no explanation for this, it makes no sense. But it does make a lot of power. Step aside, all of you burbling, peasant-pleasing V8s, because the Rolls-Royce has arrived, with not only the largest engine of the group at six and three quarter liters, but the most cylinders, 12, and two turbochargers shoved up its very dignified derriere. See it, toots. It weighs exactly nine pounds more than the Raptor. It weighs exactly the same as the Raptor. And now we need to find out whether it cuts <clears throat> the mustard. for that. It's holy and something I'm not allowed to say on YouTube. Okay, the Raptor R allows full brake torque, 
and then explodes off the line, hitting 60 in three and a half-ish seconds. That's Porsche Carrera GT territory. And that's not the most impressive thing. The most impressive thing is how hard that V8 pulls at the top end of the tack. I have never seen anything like it in a truck, ever. This high rev urgency puts this thing on a different planet to the other cars. It crossed the line more than 100 feet in front of the Cadillac. Which is even more insane, considering that thing has already been sitting at its 112 mile an hour speed limiter long before it ever crossed the line. The Raptor R's engine comes from the Mustang Shelby GT500, but the Escalade V's engine sounds like it comes from hell. But it actually comes from the CT5 V Blackwing, where it makes precisely half as much noise. The V is about five and a half truck lengths back, but it nearly matches the Raptor's speed by the time it crosses. That's because the Raptor is pressing up against its limiter, but the Caddy is still pulling hard. Ultimately, though, it's already 7 tenths behind by 60 miles an hour, which can't be explained by its extra 215 pounds and 18 horsepower deficit. The culprit? Well, there are three of them. Number one, Cadillac makes far less power at the very top of the tack. Number two, its shifts sound better, but they're slower. And number three, gearing. Once you account for the differences in tire size, Cadillac's gears are about 15% longer than the Raptor R's. Rolls-Royce might not have cut the mustard, but it did damn near keep up with that Escalade V the whole way down the track. In fact, once the two trucks shifted into second gear, they were separated by just two tenths of a second the entire way down the quarter. And at these speeds, that translates into a truck length and a half. So sorry, darling. Better luck next time. God, that never gets old. <laughs> That is a hell of a performance considering A, it accomplishes that acceleration in near silence and outrageous comfort, and B, it has a near 20% deficit in power to weight. And you can blame that overachievement on the enormous twin turbo V12's perfectly flat torque curve. Or perhaps blame is to lie on the spirit of ecstasy located perfectly betwixt my thighs. The Range Rover is the length of a city bus, but way lighter than most. It's the only car here to weigh in under 6,000 pounds. It hurdles itself to 60 in 4.6 seconds, but winds up eight and a half truck lengths behind the Raptor. bad considering this is missing a Miata's worth of horsepower relative to that Raptor. Hey, maybe that's why they put a BMW engine in this thing. As always, they're overachievers. of the trucks in this episode were supplied by our friends at Falcon Car Rental in Los Angeles. Visit them on the web and use coupon code Haggerty for an up to 35% discount on an exotic car rental. The link is above and in the description below. Thank you, Falcon. We couldn't do this without you. So the Raptor can leave regular trucks for dead. But what happens when we pit it against heavyweights from performance brands? <laughs> This is a Mercedes G63 AMG, a shape that's been around since the 1970s. It loves to almost pull its front wheels off the ground on a hard launch, which is only one of the reasons we love it. That is a Lamborghini Urus. It is the most successful vehicle in Lambo history, selling almost as many units in five years as Lamborghini did all of its cars combined in the previous 50. Neither can match the Raptor's 700 horsepower, but it needs to be said, the little G-Wagon is 300 pounds less, and that positively tiny little Lamborghini Urus over there weighs 750 pounds less. So what happens now? Mm -hmm. Find out. Delayed.
blatant. The Mercedes front end gets light on the launch, but the longer wheelbase Raptor just leaves the AMG for dead, hitting 60 a third of a second sooner. It continues to pull the whole way, finishing well ahead of the completely lunatic AMG. Meanwhile, neither can come close to the Lamborghini, which uses its summer tire traction, power, and low-ish weight to explode off the line. It doesn't quite unseat our reigning SUV champion, this car's mechanical twin, the Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT, but it's enough for the Lamborghini to finish even ahead of the Raptor. Showing that lightweight matters, even when you're talking about 6,000 pound monsters. And by the way, a gallon of Grey Poupon weighs nine and a half pounds, but we emptied it for science. Science? So we should just ignore your corpulence? Shut up, Randy, you pompous twat. 